Missed deadlines are a fact of life when you're building even a simple remote control model, and this giant squid is the furthest thing from simple we've ever attempted. But don't worry, the Rapid Nadion team is still on the job. This is Build Video 2 of 4, documenting construction of our working Sequest DSV model submarine. Of the four main challenges outlined in the first build video, we've thus far tackled two, access and propulsion. Cutting into Sequest to access the interior was an arduous process involving a razor saw, a Dremel tool, and lots of elbow grease. Where we could, we tried following the submarine's organic contours, but that wasn't always practical. Since much of Sequest will be a free-flooding model, these hatch seams won't need to be waterproofed. We do want them to seat as flush as possible, though, so several days were spent filling the air gaps and voids in the hull with vinyl adhesive caulk. When Sequest is painted during the final construction phase, the hatch seams will be far less apparent, especially when we film the boat in the relative darkness of her undersea environs. Once we'd cleaned up most of the interior, it was time to tackle the propulsion puzzle. We first decided that our initial propulsion concept was more complex than necessary. In its place is a more straightforward single-motor design featuring a propeller enclosed in a copper pipe. Rather than the inlet ports we drilled for the first draft system, intake water will likely come from a large inlet on the keel. Testing the assembly in the kitchen sink with a 7.4-volt battery confirmed two things for us. One, the DC motor is happy to run in fresh water. And two, there's plenty of thrust here, enough to propel Sequest at her scale flank speed of 160 knots. Turning will be achieved through a servo that shifts water flow from one conduit to another. Turning those stiff control nozzles takes a lot of muscle, so we invested in a waterproof Savox servo that packs plenty of torque. And on the subject of control, we ditched the initial plan to cannibalize our USS Virginia model for her onboard electronics and instead picked up a new 27 megahertz system. Of course, with this build, nothing goes according to plan. And as this video was being uploaded, we ran into a new problem with the propulsion plant. Not enough thrust once the vectoring system was installed. And a propeller shaft malfunction as well. Once we solve these teething issues, our next phase will involve a bathtub test of propulsion, steering, and radio systems. After that, we'll move on to the more challenging question of depth control. Our current plan is to use the forward main hull section for a custom-built ballast tank, and the bow for the battery, electrical components, and probably additional ballast. The hangar ball amidships will likely be a free-flooding compartment, depending on how the dynamics of the model ultimately shake out. If some of that sounds nebulous, it is. We've never done a build like this before, and fully expect more changes as our first static diving submarine takes shape. For the same reason, we're not sharing further delivery dates on this build, we're going to stumble a lot before we submerge, and your patience is appreciated as we juggle this and another project with an earlier deadline. As always, your input, suggestions, and random thoughts are welcome in the comments below. And please do subscribe to Rapid Nadion on YouTube for future videos on Sequest and all the other projects we're cooking up for the months and years ahead.